All right, everybody, welcome to the video. It is Tutor Tuesday, and today we're going to be talking about some cards that you either need to be putting in your main deck or in your sideboards to have a better matchup against control. One thing that is super important about beating control is beating control starts in your deck construction. Like, if you don't build with control decks in mind, you're going to lose to them. And the thing is, you have to because control is a viable archetype in Magic the Gathering. Like, just like there's aggro, there's mid-range, there's combo. Control is a archetype of magic. It's going to exist. It will always exist in the game. And so you have to build that in mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over the top 15 plus what I would say an honorable mention cards that are good or are better matched up against control. And I'm also going to talk about a lot of the things they share in common. So by no means is this an exhaustive list, and also by no means are these the best cards. These are just kind of some of the cards that I have, and some cards that are just in general commons, uncommons, things you can craft pretty easily. So we'll go ahead and get started with red cards. So red is typically a great matchup against control because it's so aggressive. It can get down, get in damage, and then push those last little bit of points through um, before the control deck can really stabilize. So to start off, one thing that I find is Lightning Mirror. If you're in a devoted red deck, uh, this two mana three one is pretty solid. Number one, it can't be countered. Uh, it can't be blocked by cr blue creatures, which can be relevant. Um, you have things like Niv Mizzet and Azor that are pretty good. But the one thing about Lightning Mirror is if you look at Lightning Mirror, it has one in a red. It gets plus one plus zero oh until end of turn. And this is why this is important is because this is a way for you to pressure control decks with the resources that you have on the board. So on turn three, this can attack for four power. On turn four, it can attack for five power. And that's a pretty big clock here. So, um, and a lot of these cards have this similar effect where it's something where you can dump mana into them to get you an onboard advantage, which that's part of playing the control matchup is leveraging that onboard advantage. So cards like Lightning Mirror, great card. If you're in mono red, I would consider looking at it um, because it puts a clock on your opponent pretty quickly. Yes, it has one toughness, and yes, it will die to more of the shocks and the removal-based stuff in control decks, but in terms of counter magic, it's going to get you underneath it. Next up, uh, this is my honorable mention, Fight with Fire. Um, I only say this card in red decks because if you're an aggressive red deck, you should probably slot one or two of these in your deck. Uh, it's three mana, deal five damage to a target creature, which will get rid of your Lyras. It will get rid of a lot of your big stuff. Um, it'll get rid of Niv Mizzet. Of course, they will draw a card, but the real kicker, haha, <laughs> is the kicker cost. Uh, the fact that for nine mana, you can deal 10 damage to any target or divide it as you choose. This is super relevant, especially whenever you have settled the wreckage in the man in the meta. Because what a lot of times will happen is you'll get in, you'll beat your opponent down, beat your opponent down. They'll cast a settle the wreckage, and all of a sudden you're out of gas. Well, it's very easy to go with settle the wreckage to go from four mana to nine mana in one turn. And fight with fire can be that last ten points of damage you can deal with your opponents. So uh, this is my honorable mention. Fight with fire, I think, is pretty solid, and I think is uh is something you might want to look at in decks. Next up. We have Experimental Frenzy. Now, this card is 4 mana, which makes it a little bit more difficult to get down against control decks, because a lot of times they'll be able to counter it, but this card is this card is pure, pure gas in your red base decks. Um, at the very worst, it scries you something. At the very best, it can draw and let you play anywhere from 2 to 3 cards a turn. It is absolutely insane so what happens with control decks is they'll counter you they're counter you they counter you then they'll draw a whole bunch of cards you'll just be so far behind but experimental frenzy basically says look if you're going to counter my spells you're gonna have to draw as many cards as i'm about to play and a lot of times control decks can't leverage that advantage so if you're in red take a look at experimental frenzy it is it looks like a janky rare but it is the truth and then our final red card is good old banefire uh, simple card, one red, X deals X damage to any target, but if X is five or more, the spell can't be countered and the damage can't be prevented. So what a lot of times will happen in control decks is they'll stabilize down to maybe three, four life and have a hard lock on you, but Banefire off the top for six mana, which especially in a format where you have Settle the Wreckage, is going to be a way that red decks can close it out. So those are kind of my top uh, red cards to be looking at. Next, we're going to go ahead and jump up into black. So... Uh, first off, we got Duress. Uh, if you're playing against control-based magic, 
black is the way to go because this lets you pick apart their hand lets you grab an early draw spell a counter spell get rid of a teferi but you also get to look at their hand and know what you need to be playing around like maybe you need to be playing around counter magic maybe you need to be playing around wrath you don't really know because the control player can well control that information once you have duress out you're good to go you know what to play, you know what to pick apart, and sometimes picking away one Settle the Wreckage, one Wrath, or one key removal spell is the difference between you winning and losing a game. So, uh, if you don't want to start it in your main deck, it's definitely something you want to include in your sideboard. Now, next up is Kite Self Freebooter. Same exact thing. It's something that's a duress style effect, lets you look at your opponent's hand, and lets you snipe a non-creature spell out of it, which includes Teferi, Nexus of Fate, Settle the Wreckage, Cleansing Nova, all of the control cards, and of course those pesky counter spells. And last but not least in black is Argul's Bloodfast. A two man enchantment, one in a black, pay two life, draw a card. This is the card that can help you leverage your life and gain card advantage with your opponent. Now, one thing I will say about control decks is that a lot of people see this pay two life as a downside. It's like, well, I don't want to pay two life because that just means that my opponent is going to be able to beat me faster but the thing with control decks it doesn't matter what your life is at it doesn't matter if you're at 10 life 20 life 30 life 40 life once the control player has the lock on you they can close out the game pretty quickly because that's how they work they go control 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 then they switch to the lock really hard so your life total is more of a resource that you can leverage and argul's blood fast lets you do that um especially running black white vampires this is exactly what you need to slot into your deck because you can change that life gain into cards and the more cards that you have the better you can keep up with the control deck so those are the black cards go ahead jump over to white real quick uh adanto vanguard if you'll notice a lot of these cards are below two or three mana and that's because it lets you get in under hard counters now you will get blown out by essence scatter but adanto vanguard is a great card that is good against blue and red and black because you can pay for life and give it indestructible and it also attacks as a three power creature now once again paying for life isn't a disadvantage against these control against these controlling style decks because they're just trying to lock you out the game and then beat you down so a lot of times what happens with the danto vanguard is when it's played alongside aggressive red or white decks uh what will happen is you'll beat your opponent down they'll go for a cleansing nova you pay for life, you give a Danto Vanguard indestructible, and then you just crack him for the last couple points of damage. So, Danto Vanguard, it's an early drop, it's a good beater, and it's something that will definitely be able to leverage you a couple of wins in your decks. Uh, next up, we have Dawn of Hope. In the very similar vein as Argul's Bloodfast, it is a draw engine, it's something that when you gain life, you get to draw a card, but if you look at it too, what you can do is you can pay four mana and put a soldier creature with lifelink on the battlefield. So if you're in an aggressive deck, if you're in more of a mid-rangey deck, this gives you some way to get a threat down quick and then dump extra mana if you don't have enough cards into something you have on board to get on board presence and pressure your opponent. So Dawn of Hope, once again, it has a lot of things in common. It's an early drop, it can get you cards, and it can pressure your opponent's life total. Uh, final white card that we have is Ixalan's Binding. Now, one thing you will notice about control decks is that they have very, very few finishers. And sometimes a key Ixalan's Binding can really be the difference between you winning and losing a game because it can sometimes lock out an opponent's win condition. You know, let's say right now Teferi is the, is the big baddie of control decks. Well, if you put an Ixalan's Binding on their Teferi, if that gets through and that resolves, they might not be able to win the game because they might not have anything that can bounce that enchantment back to your hand to get the Teferi out from underneath it. Because it gets rid of any target non-land permanent and they can't recast those cards. So unlike other Oblivion Ring effects, like if you O-Ring their Teferi, they'll bounce the O-Ring and go away. But with Binding, they can't recast the Teferi. So this is a very flexible answer that gives you play against control decks and other decks in the meta so go ahead rounding it off we'll go ahead and talk about our green creatures thorn lieutenant now thorn lieutenant is a house it's a two mana two three and then for six mana it can attack as a six seven once again this is a threat that comes down cheap leaves a body behind if your opponent attacks it and it's something you can dump mana in into the late game and just beat your opponent down like staring down a six power creature is incredibly difficult in these control decks um next up we have vine mare Vine Mare is Vine Mare is a house. This card is really, really good against control decks. The only thing that really beats it are sweepers in white 
and them having to counter it in blue but if it gets down on the battlefield your lightning strikes your shocks your damage based removal unless it's a big sweeper is not getting rid of the vine mirror and having five attack is a clock and it says to your opponent look you got to find an answer you got to find one quick so if you're going to dirtle around i'm just going to beat you with this five three and kind of the upgraded uh vine mirror is carnage tyrant six mana seven six Cannot be countered, trample, and hexproof. It is probably the greenest of all green cards. It just says, look, I'm on the battlefield. I'm going to smash face. Answer me if you can. So uh, if you got extra Carnage Tyrants slotting around in your green decks, go ahead and put them in there. And finally, we'll go ahead and wrap up with a couple of um, just multicolor spells. Uh, these are not by all means slam dunks, but they're all pretty good. So Assassin's Trophy, everybody knows this card is good. It lets you get rid of any permanent. Don't worry about the ramp. It also lets you get rid of Iskanta, the Sunken Ruins, which are super, super important. Uh, Unmoored Ego, this is a card that is the main reason in my control decks that I'm running Teferi, Ralzaric, Niv-Mizzet, and Azor is because one Unmoored Ego that lets that you get to slip by your opponent can literally just win you the game. Like, you go you know, Unmoored Ego, name Teferi, you could be done. That could be game over. So if you got one of these lying around, go ahead and put it in there. It's also pretty good to, uh, to get rid of maybe like Wrath, Settle the Wreckage, and a lot of cards that are just generally good against you. And then finally, we have Shalai, Voice of Plenty. This card is really sweet against your red, black, and white decks because it stops you from being targeted by Settle the Wreckage and stops your creatures from being hit by damp by targeted removal spells and for six mana anthemming out your team permanently is not a bad deal so those are all the cards that i have i'm gonna go ahead and type in one more that i think that a lot more people need to be playing sorcerer let's go with sorcerer's spyglass this card here is a great great sideboard option super super flexible uh, when it enters the battlefield you look at an opponent's hand and then you choose a card name and activated abilities of the sources with the chosen name cannot be activated unless they're man of ability so what that means is if you name teferi they cannot activate their abilities because plusing or minusing a planeswalker is activating ability um it does get rid of Ascanta, the sunken runes ability because that is not tapping to add a mana that's what a mana ability means so you stop them from searching you turn off their rouse turn off their teferis and and against other matchups, it sometimes can be pretty good. You know, cut off a Shalai, cut off an Argyle's Bloodfast, cut off a Thorn Lieutenant, some of the cards that we mentioned. Um, it can just be a solid card. So uh, there you have it, guys. Those are some of the top cards that I would say you need to be thinking about putting inside of your decks if you're struggling against control. Uh, so if you like the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. And we will see you next video. Thanks.